Hi Loft, uh, my name is Justine and I will be sharing my thoughts on chapter 8 of the book Gentle and Lonely and the corresponding verse, which is Hebrews 7.25. Um, this verse reads, Consequently, he, which is Christ, is able to save to the uttermost those who draw near to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. Um, so I think my biggest takeaway from this chapter was realizing that the flip side to justification is not sanctification by itself, but with Christ's intercession. So that was a lot of three syllable words in one sentence. Um, so I want to quickly take us back to some of the definitions of those words that were included in this chapter. First, justification. Um, to be justified is to be declared righteous in the sight of God fully legally exonerated in the divine court based entirely on what another Jesus has done in our place. And intercession. A third party comes between two others and makes a case to one on behalf of the other. Atonement accomplished our salvation while intercession is the moment by moment application of that atoning work. Um, so I think the way that I had always pictured justification was God putting us at the start of a race. And salvation might have been the guarantee that we would finish the race, but how we actually did in the race, um, how we actually ran it, sanctification in my head, was up to us. And that usually felt like it was dependent on my actions and my ability to remain self-disciplined. Um, that was just my perception of it from the way that I was brought up. And it felt really lonely and it felt like a lot of pressure. So this chapter introduces a third category, which is intercession. Um, and with that, if we go back to the analogy of a race, what it does is it asks us to picture Christ as someone in the bleachers of that race, providing encouragement, affirmation, and solidarity. So by no means, I will preface this by saying, by no means is this a perfect analogy, um, but what does it mean for me and for us as believers to know that we're not alone in our spiritual marathons, um, but that we have a triune God every step of the way? So a part of that is by justification in the past and also by the Son's intercession in the present. So this leads me to two primary reactions knowing that we have security in Christ and that we can also take comfort in that security. So to put the concept of security another way, if we can live out the belief that God the Son saves to the uttermost, it means that we are forgiven and redeemed to the uttermost as well. And what should we do with the fact that our identity as heirs in Christ is so secure? Uh, for me personally, there's a lot of comfort in that, but I think the type of comfort it provides shouldn't lead to stagnancy. It should draw us back to Christ again and again, and more importantly, it should mobilize us. Um, the way I was thinking about this was about some things in my life that bring me comfort, whether that is a group of friends gathering or a particular book or a song that I enjoy. I don't just wistfully think of how nice that past memory was. Um, if I can, I want to seek out that experience and again and again. And so it should be with our relationship with Christ. So if we can even begin to scratch the surface of the security and comfort that we have in Christ, which is such a different definition of what the world says is security and comfort, but is also so much greater than what the world gives and is far greater than the examples of like a book or a song or even a gathering of friends that I just mentioned, then shouldn't we want to draw close to God again and again? Um, so much more than we do to all of those things that I just mentioned. So I think closing thoughts, I don't want to discount the discipline and sacrifice required uh, for following Christ. But what I've been challenged by this chapter in particular is understanding that 
Christ's present intercession should ask, should make me ask two particular questions in my day-to-day -day going forward. Um, and those two questions are, how can I remain in awe of the constant nature of Christ's intercession? And how can I be comforted by the constant nature of Christ himself? So that's it. Thank you for listening. <laughs>